Good morning. Good morning. This is a wonderful, wonderful morning. This is Monday, a new day that the Lord is giving to us, a new week that he has uh, uh, extended to us by his love and his, by his grace. And therefore, we receive this day, we receive this morning with us giving in our hearts. We want to thank God because of the far we have come. And even as we start this day and this morning, let us start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We want to receive this day and this week with thanksgiving in our hearts. And this is our prayer, that Lord, by your grace, you may be able to include us in your new masses that are made even more new this morning. We also pray that this week will continue to turn out to be a blessing to us. We pray for this day, dear Lord, that will turn out to be a blessing to us. We pray for your favor. We pray for your grace. We pray for your protection, that even as we share your word this week, and even this morning, that Lord, you may speak to our hearts and to our minds, that you minister to our situation and circumstances, the Lord, we may know that it is you that is talking to us. Minister to me as I minister to your people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We thank God this wonderful morning because it is always a blessed, blessed opportunity to be able to share the word of God. Now, brethren, this month of September, which we are almost now getting to the cross of September, because by the end of this week, we'll be, uh, we'll be able to cross over to the month of October. We have been carrying on and digging deep and also learning uh, the issues of prayer. And uh, we want to thank God because of areas, areas that we have been able to talk about prayer and more so even reminding ourselves uh, the type of prayers that we need to pray and why we should pray and even in how we should pray. And this uh, wonderful uh, week, I want to pick it from where I stopped last, year, last week because last week we were dealing on how we should pray. And remember, we are using um, the, uh, the Lord's Prayer as our blueprint. You know, a blueprint Blueprint is a, an already made plan. It's like the plan that we have when we want to build our houses. And then it's like we are supposed to use those uh, drawings so that we can be able to know and follow so that the construction men and even the engineers can be able to guide and tell us this is what you're going to do for the foundation. This is what you're going to do and use your legs in the, the floor. This is how you're going to do when you're doing the drainage. All this stuff, that is what we call the blueprint. And when we say the Lord's Prayer is a blueprint of how we need to pray, it's just a, a, a model on how we need to do our prayers. And last week we dealt with the first part of the model of the Lord's Prayer. Remember we say that the Lord's Prayer is divided into two. The things that we need to pray unto the person of God and the things that we need to pray unto the family of God. And you remember we said about the first three Ps, the things that we need to do unto God. And we said we need also to uh, pray to the person of God. And the person of God is like we need also to include ourselves to the program of God. We need to include ourselves to the, uh, the, to the purposes of God. And before that we also need to include ourselves even to the paternity of God who is our father and therefore brethren this wonderful this wonderful uh, uh, morning I want us to share now the next three in this week and I will be picking on the, on three things number one we'll be talking about the provision of God because after we have been able to pray to the to the person of God then now we talk about the family of God therefore this week I'm going to deal on the things we need to pray for the family of God who me and you we are recruited in the family of God through Jesus Christ who died on the cross that he gave us the light to become the sons of God and for that reason we belong to the family of God and belonging to the family of God means that God is our father who is not only the creator of the heaven and earth but also who he has allowed us to have an intimate relationship as the father and sons and that's what he says we ask and it shall be given to us we knock doors it shall be open and not only that but we seek and we're going to find now brethren I want to take you through the three P's this week and this morning I want to pick the P, the P of provision. You remember the Lord's Prayer and I want just to remind us that this was the Lord's Prayer I was taught to the disciples that Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone who indebt to us and lead us not to temptation. That is the book of Luke chapter 11 reading from verses 1 all the way to verses 4. Now brethren, when we talk about the provision of God, this is what we are saying that he asked Jesus taught his disciples that one of the things that they need also to pray is that they may be able to pray for their daily bread. Now, the word daily bread is an amazing word. Now, when I talk about the daily bread, in fact, it's good to mention here that commentators for many years and theologians have really struggled about the word daily. 
because the word daily in the scripture is only found in that portion of prayer. And therefore they wondered why the word daily, what does the word daily mean? For bread they could be able to understand because bread is a significance of life. Bread is a significance of sustenance. That how God is able to sustain mankind and human race. When we talk about bread, we just don't talk about the bread that we eat every day. But it means how God is able to provide to sustain the human race. And therefore, when we talk about bread, and that's why Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In other words, he is not only coming, but he is coming that we may be able to be sustained to eternal life. And for that reason, I want just to remind us, it is also important to know that when Jesus includes the word daily, it brings another interesting thing. And this morning, I want to remind us, brethren, that it is important to know that as we have already prayed to the person of God, and we are be able to say, your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth. And in fact, it's like we are able to decree of who God is to us, the majesty of God, the purpose of God, the will of God about our lives. And we are able now to set ourselves on the things that are eternal and permanent. Now we turn to the things that are issues of, of, of our lives, things that are temporal. Because when we talk about food, these are temporal things. When we talk about the needs of the body, this body and this life that is temporal for just for a short time. But we have already declared about the things that are eternal and that can be sustained forever by God himself. Now we are able to talk about by the transition of he that is able to reign and rule over all these things that are eternal. Now we also seek for the things that are temporal that are needs in our lives. Now, brethren, it is important to mention this. This morning, God knows us by our names. He understands us. You know, there is a gentleman who mentioned a very interesting thing, and I, I, I really support him, uh, and, uh, and he is called uh, Aldai uh, Stevenson. And he said that one of the things that people need to remember, that one, knowing the needs of people, being able to understand the needs of people, it is halfway job of solving those needs. Do, have you ever known you can never be able to be helped to anyone if you don't understand what their needs are, what they are going through, what, they, what is a, a, their problem? I even know that even when people are looking that God may be able to deliver them from bondages, even the spiritual realms, when we talk about people who have been possessed in one way or another, or even demonic patterns that continue to oppress men in their lives and families and also lineages of people, one of the biggest and the important step to deliverance is people might, must know. What is the problem that is ailing them? What is my problem so that I may be able to come out from this habit? Even if it's something that at least has put you down, even if it's drugs or cahorism or any kind of illicit sex and all these things, you must first come to a point of understanding your problem. When you understand what ails you, then you can be able to make the right steps. And you know what the devil does every time? The devil hides the details. Sometimes he does not want you to understand what ails you, what ails your family, what ails your marriage, what ails your lineage, what ails you are, you, are, you, are, you are unable to succeed. And therefore he keeps hiding those things so that at least you may not be able to know them. Because when you understand your problem, you can be able to seek help and then you can be able to find the reverence or even you can be able to find a solution. And for that reason, when we are talking about God, he is not just a person who understands, he understands and secondary, he is able to do something about it. And that's why it becomes different when we are talking about seeking help from men and seeking help from God. Men can understand. You can talk to them with their mind and intelligence and experience. They can understand what you are going through. But sometimes they are limited. They have nothing they can do. But when we are talking and calling and speaking to our Father who art in heaven, who holds authority and power, who is able to create and he has preserved the world and also the human race all these years, we know that he can be able to do something because even that which is impossible with men, Jesus declared to his disciples, there is nothing impossible with God because even that which is impossible with men, it is possible with God. And for that reason, when we come to God to seek for daily help, what happens is, is like he is able by his grace, not only to understand us and our circumstances, but he also understands, he understands what he can be able to do for us. Now, allow me just to say this. When we say that we are seeking for God, um, God's help and, uh, in our daily bread, number one, very first, what I, we need to understand is one, God is always willing to meet our needs, but not our wants. Now, let me say this. 
You know there is a difference between needs and wants. When we are talking about daily bread, we are talking about the things that sustains our lives. Now, and therefore my brother and sister, one of the things that we should remember every time when we come to pray and when we come to seek the face of God is that God understands and knows what we need. Do you know there are times we love, we love and want things which will never be a blessing to us. Sometimes by the way we have cried and pursued for things and opportunities, even by the way opportunities of business, even opportunities of, a, of, a, of career, and we have not completely understood our purpose in our will, uh, our will uh, the will that the Lord has for us. And for that reason, we pursue what we want and we fail to get what we need. And that's, uh, that, let me tell you, brethren, what I've learned. If you get what you want and it's not what you need, you'll be seeking again that which you need. That's why even you see people making very interesting mistakes. Somebody has just made a mistake. He has made a decision. All of a sudden, you also see that these people are not comfortable. They are not, um, they are, they are not uh, satisfied. They keep moving out and out there and here. Because one of the things that they did, they pursued what they wanted. But they never got what they needed. The daily bread is, give us our daily bread. Remember, the words here now have changed from your kingdom. You are, you are, you are, you are, may your kingdom, your name, now it has turned, turned to us. Give us our daily bread. Bre brethren, it is good to know that when we are talking about the pure provision, God is always willing to meet our need. Number two, number P2 is also good to know that one of the things that the word I was talking about daily, daily is an amazing thing. In the plan of God in divine provision, God has made it in a way that every time the provision we receive do not in any way take us away from God. In other words, God is not ready to provide so that we may learn away or fall away from his will or even from him. What God desires more than anything is fellowship with men. And therefore why he is asking that you ask your daily bread is because when you ask for your daily bread today, which also means enough for tomorrow, then even tomorrow you will be coming back to a fellowship with God seeking for the daily bread of the days that are following. Meaning that God would want that we remain in a place of prayer, a place of fellowship with him, a place of listening to him, a place of enjoying his presence and even opening our minds and understanding deeper in understanding of who he is, his will and his purpose. That's why he's saying our daily, that word daily means every time we come looking for enough. Can you remember in the book of Exodus, the amazing thing about manna? You know manna was provided for a day because God wanted the children of Israel every time and every morning to remember that there is someone who provides. They have to go out to the field to take, pick up manna. But if you try to pick manna for two portions, then the next portion became, they became a worms. In fact, it, it, it turns to be a worms, meaning that God required that man all the time know that he must go back to God for divine provision. God's provision is supposed to get us nearer and closer to God, but not to fall away from the will of God. Allow me to say number four, that we also should remember that God has not encouraged resiness. That's why even if he is providing in a divine way, he also requires us every time we also go before him in prayer. The children of Israel had to go out to the, to the field to correct the manna. The only day they were required to correct two portions was a day just prior to the Sabbath because God did not... Uh, uh, Ignota was not ready to provide on the last day. And amazingly, brethren, we should remember that one of the things that is also important that God does not in any way, not just because we are praying that we become lazy. No, God does not encourage laziness. We must wake up, work, and be able to do whatever God has put in our hands so that we may be able to receive the daily bread. The daily bread also means getting an opportunity to, to employment, getting an opportunity to do business, because out of the business, we are able to meet our daily needs. And finally, and finally, uh, the prayer reminds us that when you say give us, it reminds us that we also include others. You know, one of the challenges as I come to a cross, that is a big challenge even to the world today and also to our country, Kenya, is like every time when we want to ask God to give us blessings, we ask with a very self selfish way. It is all for me, me, I and myself. That even when God provides two bread, two loaves of bread, He's not providing two loaves of bread so that you can hold one. In fact, He's providing two breads, uh, two pieces of bread, so that you can be able to eat and get satisfied with your family, but also extend it to your brother who have nothing to eat. 
May the Lord help us to remember that we are not saying, give me my daily bread. He is saying, give us. So that every time when we receive from God, we remember, we receive from a generous God who also would wish that we liken him, that we may also become generous and willing to share the blessings and the, uh, the, 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 the goodness that he has, uh, has extended to us. May the Lord bless us this morning. May the Lord bless us as we start the week, even as we continue to seek God's grace and provision to our lives. Do you know what, my brother? God knows what you need. God understands the things that you... And there is nothing so small that can skip the attention of God. There is nothing so huge that the Lord cannot be able to provide. And therefore, whatever you need even this morning, are you so pushed and wondering how you're going to get uh, uh, something that you are looking, you are looking for so, uh, so dearly? The Lord is willing to provide to you. He is going to provide to you and me about our daily bread. Because he said to his disciples... Pray, it shall be given, and knock doors, it shall be open, and seek, and you shall find. May the Lord cause you to ask, may the Lord cause you to, uh, to seek, may the Lord cause you to knock doors, and by his grace, may he provide to all your needs according to his riches in glory. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.